big show, big I TV know. show. Oh. Welcome, everyone. Why is what we eat so intrinsically linked into who we are? Our appetite for food books, nutritional supplements, is it at tipping point? Is it here to stay? Or have we just always been like this, but just in a different form? Let's get our teeth stuck into this, shall we? Susie, I'd like to start with you, actually. Fat is a feminist issue, 40 years old. Where have we come since then? I was writing about people like me who had, at that point, something called an eating problem, compulsive eating, so trivial that it wouldn't even now register. You do have an opinion that many of the, the books we are reading about health are uh, diet books in disguise. Yes. I'm old enough, as you can tell. I've lived through enough nutritional theory. I grew up when protein was good. You know, my mother, we didn't have bread in the house. We didn't have potatoes. Now we mustn't have cheese. Now we mustn't have meat. Now we mustn't have this. And I suppose I've watched these things come round and round and round again. But what's really new, I think, for this period has been the introduction of non-food foods, mm -hmm. which a great deal of the population relies on. Mm. Which is so anti, Melissa, what you're doing with your books. I mean, you'd be horrified to think that anyone considered your books as diet books, wouldn't you? We've always talked about the way that we eat as very much... Um, getting back to basics of eating real food and preparing your own food and learning via that. Going back to what Susie said, I think that food has become so complicated because of so many truths and untruths. What we're taught at school is different from what some of us may now know to be true. And even talking to some nutritionists as well, some of the things I've learned are different from what I know to be true now. I think what happens now is the supermarkets, the chain stores, the food eateries, they've all they're all changing. They all realise we want to eat vegetables, we want to eat real foods, we want to know what's in our food. So there has been a massive, massive change for the positive. I agree that it's super complicated, the fact that we are hooked onto non-food substances which play havoc with your blood sugar levels and make you crave more of that stuff, affect your sleep, and therefore if you don't sleep well, you, you eat more food. If but the, the underlying all that, Susie, and you, you've written a lot about the eating your emotions. Well, how do you get, get right down to that root of I but I think comfort you, eating because? Okay, yeah. Suzanne, you said no. if we eat something that makes us feel bad and then we want more, well the question is why were we going towards it what was our longing what was what did we really have an appetite for was it a feeling or was it a food if it was a feeling they don't belong in the fridge they actually don't and you'll still have the same feeling <laughs> afterwards that you had before compounded by the fact that you've eaten something that didn't work for you so you now have a double feeling of awfulness which is that you but you know the mars bar which you thought was going to look after you doesn't have written on it, this is going to make me feel happy. I got to where I am today because I started to observe. And I guess if you, if you want to call it being more mindful about it now. When I watched one of my best friends, um, they're Italian and their, their whole family struggled with weight. They would get boxes of chocolate for Christmas and they would be, it would be the dreaded thing in the house. The dreaded thing. So they decided... If they eat it all in one day, it's over, and they don't have to deal with it anymore. Everybody's well, felt that. That's why everyone's <laughs> and I, laughing. Yeah, and I, I remember as a maybe 15-year-old seeing this diet on the fridge door. So I actually started to observe the way I ate. You know, because we can't control what we eat. We don't want to control what we eat all the time, you know. But we say to our clients, you know, if you love this thing, enjoy it. Yeah. Sit and actually enjoy it. And they find that halfway through, they suddenly go, do you know what? That was actually enough. enough. Yeah. And Rose, we've talked before about the... Um, really being disengaged with our food. When you see clients in your practice when they come to you about for, for nutritional advice, where do you start with? When you say, to, you might say to someone, you know, you've got to really reconnect with your food. People are trying really hard, but they're trying by buying low fat mayonnaise, Ugh. which isn't actually a food, or they try by buying diet Coke, you know. And that's why as I said, it's not rocket science, because people have got so disengaged with just basic fruit, vegetables, meat. No, but you fish. make your children eat things that the sell by date's gone, don't you? I will, if, yeah, if it, that's what I mean. People, they go by a sell by day. Surely you can look at a, you can smell a piece of cheese or you can look at a carrot. And if you can't yeah, tell yeah. that that carrot is fine or not fine, yeah. then there's something seriously wrong somewhere, in my opinion. You know, I think that, that sh is, um, shows how disengaged people are with their food, that they can't 
identify when something's going off or smell it or taste it, you know. That's when I say it's not rocket science, that's what I mean. The more complicated, if you can't understand the ingredients on food you're putting in your body, then you probably shouldn't be putting it in But your don't you think part of what you're saying, or we're all saying, is that the, the minute you have a prohibition, you set up a psychological fight between yourself. So part of you saying, I'm not allowed to have this, and part of you saying, what do you mean I'm not allowed to have this? And your tips at the root to a stable relationship with your food is not eating when you're not hungry. I mean, yeah, I we don't pee when we don't need to pee. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so we've interrupted that appetite. We've interrupted it very early on. This is not to blame mums at all, but children's appetites are, are being disturbed very, very early on. And yeah. So for the, this generation, they may not be able to return to a state. They've got to learn a new state. Yeah. Yes. OK. Um, Questions, questions. Lady at the back there. What's your name? I'm Katie. Hello. Hi, Hi there. Um, so you speak about the benefits of mindfulness when eating, but when does mindfulness become obsession? Mm. Good question. Um, shall we throw that to the psychotherapist first? Yes. <laughs> I think it's a good question because mindfulness has become a new tag, hasn't it? Rather than a source of reflection and empathy towards yourself. Because mindfulness is nothing if you aren't curious about yourself. It's not mindfulness if what you are is, is obsessive. That's just another form of mm. anorexia. But yeah, controlling. It? So it's got to have humor too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. What is it? There's a new. The, oh, we, I always forget it. I said it. You Orth know, when orth orthorexia. Orthorexia. Yeah. yeah. You know, which is when people are so wa worried about what f you know they won't go out for dinner at their friend's house in case they use the wrong dressing on their salad mm -hmm. and they won't go and eat in a restaurant in case it's got the wrong type of salt and and you just think god that's like well, I'm, but I'm, you know in a way if you're trying to look after yourself when you haven't been able to be reflective about food and what works for you and you're trying to eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full and only eat the most delicious foods, only eat your favorite mm -hmm. foods and see how they work and think about why you're eating when you're not actually hungry. Maybe there is a period when it is very difficult to go to other people's yeah. places mm -hmm. while you're in that yes. process yes. before you can surrender and think, doesn't really matter if I've eaten something yeah. that yeah. is not exactly, but it yeah. takes a while to get there yeah. because you're Please not on stable ground. Yes. Yeah. Center, yeah. There's yeah. probably I research to show that if you sit around the table eating junk food, but you're happy and you're laughing, oh, not absolutely. You're, like, you're probably digesting better than sat with some worthy meal that no one's yeah. really enjoying. Mm -hmm. So if you're chewing um, a McDonald's burger really nicely and enjoying it, you're going to get so much more out of it than stuffing a qu quick quinoa and, yes. and cabbage salad down that you're not chewing, which is just basically fermenting in your your gut yeah. and causing just, all kinds yeah. of problems, you not least that you didn't enjoy it. Yeah. And you'll be really boring as well. Yeah. Really I think, I've, done, I think I've been boring word. about food for on and off for many years yeah. and I just know when people just go yeah. glaze yeah. over and I think, okay, I'll stop talking about but I, I think, I think, I think salad. The main, main word is kindness. So if, instead of thinking, am I being good, am I being bad, am I, I think, or whatever it is, I think if, if you can let one thought into your head is, am I being kind to myself? So if I'm overstressing, not kind, Am I being okay with this? Am I being gentle with myself? That's kind. Yeah. Aww, kind that's maybe better than good or bad. Thank you very much for coming along.